coming to you from the trenches of blue-collar America, the place where the wheels of America are kept turning and turning. It's the Blue Collar Success Network, hosted by Blue Collar Business Coach, author and speaker, Jerry Eisenhower, with CBC Coaching. Take it away, Jerry. Hey, you know one of those things that really just gets me in life? Does it get, let's see if it gets you too. I go somewhere to do business, and I have a problem. And I tell the person I'm doing business with what the problem is. It could be by telephone. It could be face-to-face. And at this point, it's when my blood pressure goes up. And I'll bet you your customer does too. And that's when that person says, well, I need to get you the manager. Or, I can't deal with that. Or, that's our process. Or, that's the way we do it. Any of those answers is only going to run my blood pressure up. And what it's also going to do is escalate my anxiety. And you know the thing that goes with anxiety for most of us? It's this thing we call anger. So here's the question for you today. Are you empowering your people? Are you empowering your people that when a customer calls with an issue, is the person that they're having contact with empowered to take care of that problem? Are they truly empowered? Now, you're probably saying, well, I can't do that. They might make a mistake. And you know something? You're right. But the other side of that is, maybe you don't have a system for these people to operate to when something goes wrong. And see, that's what's often the case. Your people have never been given the guidance to take ownership. They don't know what to do. Recently, I went into a restaurant And this was probably one of the simplest things that anyone could have taken care of in the world. Now, whenever I eat, I like to put salt on my food. Are you a person that salts your food? Yeah, because in this day and time, most restaurants don't put enough salt on for my taste. At this point, we could go into the health benefits of salt. And where that's probably a good thing, and they've probably done me a favor and everything else. But here's the problem. I'm the customer, and I want salt. So what did I do? I shook the salt shaker, and nothing came out. The salt shaker was full, but nothing came out. Well, there wasn't a lot of people in the restaurant, so I went to the table next to me, and I borrowed the salt shaker. And you know what? No salt came out. And this salt shaker was full. It's like, no, wait a minute. This is crazy. So I unscrewed the top of the salt shaker to see what was wrong. And the reason the salt didn't come out was it was damp inside, and the salt had all stuck into a solid block of salt. In fact, the cap was completely full of salt. Now, this was a restaurant that had takeout service before we go further. So the server came out and wanted to know, is everything okay? And I said, well, no, ma'am, it's not. Can I get a salt shaker that may work? And her answer was, well, there's one right there on your table. Now my blood pressure is starting to go up. I know I may look elderly and I wear glasses, but I could see this salt shaker. So then I said, young lady, if you notice, there are two salt shakers on this table because I done went to that table I borrowed the salt shaker, and neither one of these salt shakers work because your salt is very wet inside your salt shakers. Now, this is a minor thing, and anybody that's ever been in the kitchen knows any salt shaker, you always put rice in the salt shaker, and that absorbs the moisture, and you eliminate this, this problem forever, okay? But no. Then the girl looks at me with the look of, well, sir, I don't know what to do. Now, now this is... Now, this is not a lot of empowerment at this point of what do you do when the salt shaker doesn't operate. And I know this sounds really minor, but at the same time, I'm hungry, it's lunchtime, I'm in a rush, 
I just want a little salt on my food. So she looks at me. She is dumbfounded over what to do next. So I asked her, I said, ma'am, do y'all have any little takeout packages of salt? Well, yes. I said, well, maybe you could just get a couple of those for right now. We could move forward. And I tried to explain to her, you know, ma'am, you, you really need to think. best thing you can do is somebody will just go over to that grocery store over there and get a little bit of salt, dump all the salt out, and dry all these salt shakers out. And when you refill them, just put a little rice in here. I bet you you won't have this problem in the future. Well, this young person had no idea how this worked. So what happened was this, that she hadn't been empowered? Was this that she hadn't been trained? Was this a lack of systems? God only knows. I would think that anybody in the restaurant, Stephen, would you agree that anybody in the restaurant business would know this? Yeah. They would. And see, there's other things like this that goes on. The next time you go, if you're a salt and pepper user or not, I want you to look at this. Do you know there's a difference in the top for a salt shaker and a pepper shaker? And if you put the salt top on the pepper, do you know the pepper won't come out? But yet, how many restaurants do we go to? And why is why does this happen? Because we don't have systems. So hey, what this is all about is it's empowerment. And as you're thinking about empowering your people, you're a leader. And naturally, you're going to be worried that your people may fail. They may make a mistake. And you know something, you're right. They're going to make mistakes. That's part of what leaders do. They empower people. And all of us, hopefully, I don't know if this young lady learned from the, from the salt incident, but we all learn from our mistakes. And from every mistake that we have in life, we develop a system that we never want to repeat that mistake in the future. So what you got to do is you got to empower your people, but you got to lead your people. You got to build the systems within your business. So I'm going to ask you a question right now. Do you have systems, written standard operating procedures within your business that explains everything that you've got to do in this business? You see, this is one of the principles of the E-Myth written by Michael Gerber some years ago. And that is how do you systemize your business. See, what you should be looking for in your business is, is developing a business that no one ever has to ask anyone else a question. It's amazing when people ask you the same question over and over again about the same thing. You know, it's amazing. I know people that can actually go to a location and two weeks later, they're actually caught that they got to go again and they want to know what the address is for that building. What is it? Well, you've only been there four times, so I don't know, you know, but hey, we'll write you down the, the address once again, okay? We'll write it down for you. So, and see, Stephen's over here laughing because he thinks I'm talking about him, but actually, you're not the only one that does this, Stephen, okay? So this is, Stephen's my producer, okay? He runs the soundboard over there, and you hear him kind of laughing. So see, he took this personal. But see, I know at this point that it's Stephen now will never ask me again how to find where our studio's located, even though he comes here every few weeks and we record some podcasts. What did he do this morning? What's the address of the studio? Now, Stephen is over here right now thinking, okay, just I just let him, you know, I gave him ammunition for this podcast today simply on what he's doing. But, Stephen, it's not just you. You know, I got a guy that works for me, so it's not a millennial thing. Don't go there. Because he's in his 70s. He has a Harvard degree. He has a master's degree in education. He was with me on the trip the other week. We went to the building twice. On the third day, he had to drive himself. You know what he did? He said, I'll follow you. I said, wait a minute. You've been there. Well, I always just ask my GPS. And Stephen is holding his head down right now thinking, okay. And see, so it's not a millennial thing, Stephen. It is uh, It's just what's important in our life, okay? This was not your top of the order thing to do was know where you were going today. That's Stephen, okay? So great producer. He can run that soundboard for me, but uh, directions, well, you wouldn't want Stephen dispatching your crews. You didn't tell them where they would go. So let's get down. Let's empower our people. Let's give them ownership. 
Let's get the systems written. And hey, I got a big announcement coming. I got a brand new book hitting the shelves any time now. In fact, it could be out by the time you listen to this. I've been talking systems in business since back in the 1990s, writing standard operating procedures. So you know what? I've got a new book coming out. Stephen, you don't even know about this. It's called Standardizing Standard Operating Procedures. And what it's for, it's written for blue-collar business owners or any business owner, and it gives you the eight steps of how to write standard operating procedures for your business. And it's going to be available on Amazon. It'll be in a Kindle version. It'll be in a printed version and all kinds of things. So, hey, if you want to know more how to write the systems, because to empower your people, you're going to need the systems. Be watching on Amazon. Check me out on my Facebook page. But coming out in the next few weeks, it's going to be my new book, Standardizing Standard Operating Procedures. Just finished the cover design last night, and hopefully this thing's going to be on Amazon, Stephen, maybe in about two weeks. How about that? You know, make sure when this comes, we won't raid, you know, we won't raid Terry to have a copy of this, don't we? You think he needs this? See, this whole thing, most people do, because most people don't know how to operate systems. They don't know how to do them. So that's what we're going to talk about in here. Uh, excuse me, that's what the book's all about. So, hey, go to Amazon, look it up, Standardizing Standard Operating Procedures by Jerry Eisner. Love for you to have a copy of this book. It's got a really great-looking cover. It's got a picture of a big old gold key on it, and it's unlocking your future. How about that, Stephen? You like that? I'm going to get you a signed copy. Along with, I'm going to write the directions down in my book so you will find how to get to our studio each time we sit down and do these messages. So anyway, this is Jerry Eisenhower, CBC Coaching, Blue Collar Success Network. Hey, look me up on Facebook, CBC Coaching. Look me up on YouTube, CBC Coaching again. I'm on Twitter. I'm on uh, Instagram. I'm on LinkedIn. Connect up with me. Let me know how I can help you get to your business dreams. You know, that's what we got here. That's what we operate our entire company on. We do these podcasts as a way to get our messages out, hopefully help people, give you some value. Let's talk. My name's Jerry Eisner. You can reach me, jerry at cbccoaching.com, through my website or any other way. You have a great week. Go out, make your dreams a reality. That's what we're all here for, and I wish you the most success in your personal and business ventures. Talk to you later. Thanks for joining us here at the Blue Collar Success Network, sponsored by CBC Coaching and hosted each week by coach, speaker, and author Jerry Eisenhower. For more information on the services provided by Jerry and CBC Coaching, look them up at cbccoaching.com. Our mission here at Blue Collar Success Network is to help blue collar pros like you turn your business dreams into your business realities. Let's talk.